Hello, hello. I am Kim Beagler, the owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill, and I am sitting here at home in Harrisburg, Oregon. I'm going to the mill later, but I'm at home today doing this. So uh, welcome. If you are new, I'm going to talk a lot about hand spinning, hand spinning, making yarn, wool, hand spinning, all those things. Knitting, there is some knitting in this one. So um, welcome. If you are returning, you know all this and I'm so excited that you're back with me. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button, you all. And you can now hit the little bell button. Also that lets you know when I have a new video out. So welcome. Okay. This episode I talk a lot about, I've got a lot of hand spinning stuff. I did cast on a new knitting project and I do have some videos from inside the mill that are pretty fun because I am working with some dyed in the wool, very vibrant colors. So um, that's what we're covering this week. Okay, let's just jump in because I have a new cast on, so let's start with knitting. Here she is and you all, this pattern, it is called the Beachwater Break Vest. It was from the, um, it's by Irina Anikiva. Sorry, I never looked at her name. I will put a link in the show notes. Um, it is from the Inner Weave magazine from fall of 2018. So that's how long, and I printed it out then. That's how long ago I wanted to cast this on. I cast on, so I was having a lot of anxiety because we finished that Calliope sweater. That was my big project. And I didn't have any other big project on the needles. And it turns out I am a big project kind of a person. When it comes to my wheel, I like to have one big project going. And when it comes to my knitting, I like to have one big project going. So it was time. And I couldn't figure out, I couldn't even wait for some of the hand spun that I had done that I wanted to dye. So I just said, let's just do this. So I'm using Utopia Sustainable. We have it in our online shop. Um, I forget the colorway but I think it'll be great on me. And it's so lovely, 100% wool, amazing. So we have got, let me just show you, this was a fun, everything's all wrapped up, you guys. This is my second take because I filmed the whole thing and it was muted. Oh my gosh, one of those days, muted. This is the only downfall of having um, a beautiful little microphone system. Sometimes you hit the mute button. So here is the ribbing for the back of the sweater. And last night I got going on the front ribbing. So you um, are casting on the back, doing all the knitting, rib actually ribbing, and then casting on the front, then joining and working in the round. Um, the fun thing about this was you use the provisional cable cast on, which um, is very easy. And you're doing that so that you, you have a, a waist yarn that you're using to cast on those stitches. And then you start knitting a few rows and then you can pull out that waist yarn, stick some other needles into those stitches that uh, were just kind of sitting in that waist yarn. And in this pattern, she has you working um, the next row, you are working from both ends of this, from both needles. So basically I started with a 56 stitch cast on, but when you start to work from both of these needles, you go up, it's magic, to, it doubles it, 112. Um, so it was really fun, it was really fun. It might sound wonky if you haven't done it before, but it's no nothing to be afraid of for sure. So I'm very excited about this. The Sustain -A Wool, it softens up a bit as you knit with it. And then when you block it, that's when the magic happens with that wool. So uh, I'm excited to be working with it on a bigger project. Okay, spinning, because I have got spinning galore. First off, you all might remember if you've been watching these two bobbins I had. So when I bought these fibers, this was what I had planned. I picked out a color that I thought would pop with that kind of bluish color in there. So I picked out this tonal blue to go with this. And then I spun it all up and I did some samples and I was like, I don't know. I literally let the sample sit for like two weeks in my craft room. And here we go. The decision I actually ended up doing with it what I had planned to do, which was to ply the blue, whoop, to ply the blue with that variegated. So here we are. I'm in love with it. I loved it the other way. I had chain plied it so that there were color blocks and there was not that additional blue ply in it. 
it was beautiful also, but I just couldn't get past how this made everything pop. Um, I have one more obviously set of bobbins to ply up. I'm gonna hang on to it for a while. I probably will end up selling it because I gotta start de-stashing some of my hand spun. Um, I start to feel a little anxious if I have too much. I'm just one like, if somebody else loves this, let me pass it on and let them find joy in it. So, um, and this is BFL. Anyway, stunning. I'm so happy with it. Supported spindle. On my, other, on my wheels, I am still working on cotton. I finished one bobbin and I'm gonna start the second one. I really wanna do a tank out of that, a cotton tank out of hand spun yarn. That's the goal. So we're gonna trudge along on that. And I'm working on some stuff on my Nano, which you will see actually in the videos coming up. I include a video, uh, Linda and Cami, who come to Mill Day pretty regularly. They gifted me for my birthday this lovely fiber. I talk about it in the video. And so I put that on my wheel on my birthday night. So I love it. I love it. I'm excited to finish that. Okay, supported spindle, you all. I have videos for you all of progress. So I did one video. Mitch took a quick video of me from about two weeks ago. And yesterday I did a video. Big time progress. I am now able to have, it's not the most graceful, but the supported spindle can be turning while I am drafting. And it's happening, y'all. It's happening. Uh, yesterday was a big day. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why, but you know when something just kind of clicks? And then it seems like it's gonna stay the clicking because when I was first learning hand spinning, it clicks and then it goes away and then it clicks and then it goes away. This seems to be the, the permanent click, which is exciting. Uh, I have a couple tips that I'm gonna share with you. So if you are learning at home, they may help. But I will say the first tip is to take a class if you can. I signed up for Josephine Walton. I'll have her link in the show notes, her online class and I was doing what we all do, right? I went to YouTube, I started searching, I was looking for that video that was going to be the video that showed the perfect angle, that talked me through it. How about if, because I can afford it, I find somebody who took the time to make a video to teach me. That's kind of where I got to, which I hope is what lots of you think when you take my online course for wheel spinning. Um, lots of time was put into it to make it, so all those YouTube videos, you don't have to look at them. You can just look at this course. It's the same with Josephine's course. I was so excited. She teaches very similar to me, walks through like getting to know your spindle, practicing with some different stuff, and then starting park and draft, moving on. Highly recommend. Um, so here we are. I think what I'll do is go to the videos, let you all see, and then I'll tell you my couple of tips and we will uh, move on. So I will see you all in a minute. Oh, I said it's humbling, right, to share. I think it would be a measure of that shit. See it happen? Hmm? You're like, whoa. She's making it happen. I guess it's, we've got some work to go, but just finally put the pieces together of what I was. just learning to stay out of my own way at this point with my hands which is easier said than done but practice just about every day is helping and I am using some horn dorset that I dyed in the wool my patreon 
uh, members grabbed it up for the most part, but it's really lovely. Here, I'm just going to add a little bit more to that spot. And I would talk about what I'm doing, but I can't yet. <laughs> I just can't. I'm not there yet. But I will definitely. And you can see this is about two weeks in. I'm not going to say it's beautiful, but you know what? It's less awkward than it was, I think, to watch. So that's good. Okay. You can probably hear my dog snoring in the background. Well, I don't know if this will have brought you all peace or anxiety, but I wanted to kind of show that it's not always pretty when you're learning. That's okay. And what I'll do after we get off is I'm gonna move this little batch that's here. This is kind of your temporary, and I'm gonna unwind it onto my hand, and then I'll wind it onto here, and then keep going. Okay, so decent, right? I was super awkward, and now I'm slightly less awkward. We're not gonna say graceful, but even today from yesterday's video, so good, so good. I, I still, I'm not gonna say graceful, but we're getting closer to graceful. So I wanted to show you, I've got this, and of course, oh no, I just dropped my cop off of this spindle, so we'll just put it on there for the sake of showing you, but it's not gonna be as pretty. Okay. Two things. One for me was fiber staple length. And this is so huge. I teach it, I preach it, but it didn't occur to me until a little bit in that part of the problem I was having was that some of the fiber I was using, the staple length was longer. And when you are spinning on supported, it puts twist in real fast, which is why it's so wonderful, wonderful for spinning lace weight or very fine yarns. Because that twist goes in fast, also making it great for a shorter staple length because the shorter staple length, you need the twist to go in fast so the yarn stays together. So I started with a Shetland, it was too long. And you remember, I was having a very hard time drafting. Like I could, I was like, it's broken, everything's broken, the fiber's broken, it's all broken, my head's broken, all those things. Um, I switched to something else and I can't remember. I kind of had a little bit going, a little groove going. I switched to some Romney. Wah, wah, no because the Romney I was spinning, I didn't realize it at the time, but the Romney I was spinning had such a long staple length that I could not stay ahead of that twist. The twist, because the Romney is, the twist is getting in down here and there's still, you know, three more inches, four more inches of Romney left, but I can't draft anymore because there's already twist has gone in. So I finally did figure that out as I was thinking about using luxury fibers and all this for spinning on supported spindle. So I found some Gulf Coast Native that I had stashed away some little balls from a few years ago. Bing, bing, bing. So much better. So if you are trying to learn on a supported, think about that, right? Think about what you're spinning. And if you're having trouble drafting, maybe that is part of the reason. The other thing that just came to me yesterday is when you, and Josephine walks you through um, park and draft, which is you make the spindle spin. I do not want to drop this because it has glass on the bottom. Make the spindle spin and you hold the twist back. I can't kind of do everything, but you're holding the twist back. You have a pinch on that fiber. Then when the spindle stops, you let go, let go of some of the twists and you can kind of draft and let that twist out, not having to worry about what your spindle is doing. So this is a super common step-by-step -step way to do this. Now, when you go to try to start spinning with the spindle moving while drafting, you do not want to have that pinch. And it's not that I still had the pinch necessarily. I mean, you'll see in my video, or if you go back, I kind of let, you know, it's very similar to how I do some supported um, spinning on my wheel, but I kind of have a little light pinch at points. Ideally, you get to where you don't have a pinch, right? You're just letting the draft in. But what is important when you're kind of in that middle stage is that you have to let that twist that was underneath that pinch, it needs to come up above your finger. 
Um, and it's really easy in that in-between stage to have the twist building down here and it's really not able to get over to get into what you're drafting. So I realized that yesterday, like really make sure you kind of extend the yarn that is spun out so that that twist is coming up and over that finger. And then it can be entering in because you've got to stay just ahead of the twist when you're drafting, when you're spinning long draw, whether it's on a wheel or on a sport of spindle. So that is really important that that twist is able to get in. Otherwise the fibers won't stay together and you're just going to have breaks. So those were my two big game changer epiphanies. Um, you're welcome to share game changer epiphanies you had as well. Uh, and to keep your hand out of the way, like your hand is your own worst enemy in some ways. <laughs> On a support spindle, it's very hard to keep your hand out of the support spindle's way, but it's just baby steps and practice. You all, practice. If I had stopped because it wasn't coming naturally to me, naturally, I never would have gotten to this point. But instead I said, you know what? I'm gonna take a class. I'm gonna practice 10 minutes every day, which is what I tell my students when I teach them, whether it's online or in person, 10 minutes every day. And it's so easy to say, I don't have 10 minutes every day. But most of us do, most of us do. So find the 10 minutes, dust off your wheel, grab your spindle, whatever it is you're trying to learn on or any craft and just make the time because it is those little incremental steps that will get you to where you are more proficient. You don't have to be a natural to do this. So there is my pep talk for you all. And it was a pep talk for myself. I gave myself constantly. You will get better at this, but you have to put in the time. Um, and I'm still having to put in the time. I will be putting in the time for a while and that's okay. It's all part of the learning process, right? So, okay, I will get off that high horse of preaching about practice. But I did want to show you. I should have done this before. Here is my first, and this is just a single, and here's my first plied. And the white is that Gulf Coast native that I found. And the beautiful thing is that you're spinning long draw, and so it's such lofty, lofty yarn, and I am really shocked by the amount of yardage that you can spin quickly on a sport spindle really shocked. So, um, because you're spinning long draw, spinning long draw in general is a very fast way to spin yarn. I do have a course for it on the wheel in case you're wondering. Um, it's no different. I mean, I was plying like, holy cow, this is quite a bit of yarn I cranked out. So anyway, there you go. There's my tips link to Josephine's course in the show notes. Um, what's happening at the mill is a whole lot of fiber club, which I am freaking the heck out over i'm just freaking out over it and i'm thrilled about it i cannot wait there should be extra there should be extra um and it should be going out like within the next few days you all so all you fiber clubbers hurrah if you want to get on the wait list for fiber club send me an email send me an email and i will get you on the wait list for it uh it's beautiful if you're not on the wait list if you're trying to get fibers from me i'm going to say this probably a million times I'll say it in every video, but if you are trying to get fibers from me and you're like, her website has nothing on it, that is because it disappears quickly. Uh, so, and I can't do the like once a month, here's a shop update or once, it just doesn't work for how I produce. And I don't wanna have a bunch of inventory sitting. Uh, so I just do it as I do it. Uh, usually every week I put new fibers out. It goes to my Patreon people first. Fiber Club subscribers will get first chance at Fiber Club fiber that's left. Then it goes to my Patreon people, my paid Patreon subscribers, and then to my newsletter. Most of the time stuff doesn't make it to socials anymore. And I apologize for that, but I'm trying to, I'm just trying, I'm trying to figure out the best way to make it work for, for all of you and for me. Um, so Patreon again, for $5 a month, you get the early bird specials and you get into our new Q and A's, which are great. And we have one this Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. They are also recorded. So you can go back and watch it later, but it's geared towards beginning spinners that have questions or maybe not begin, but just still have questions. So um, link in the show notes and they get early bird specials. So um, the fiber, I'm gonna show you that I'm milling up in the mill videos got snatched up basically by my Patreon. It's the fiber that I'm spinning here and in the video, the support of spindle video. So um, yeah, that's what's happening at the mill. I'm working on fiber club 
and I've got a whole lineup of other fibers coming, so stay tuned. And I do have, um, I meant to show you, I have some spinning at the wheel videos too. So I'll just throw them in here because I forgot. Uh, I am spinning up that fiber that I show you on my Nano. I guess that's it, just that. So we'll cut to videos at the mill where I am working on this fiber. This is a horn dorset lamb. I just had one fleece. It was a beautiful short staple, which is why I had so much success spinning it on my supportive spindle. I dyed it in the wool pretty willy nilly and then had to figure out how to make it work <laughs> to make a pretty fiber. So you'll get to see that thought process as I go through it at the mill. And then I'll also throw in that spinning video where I'm spinning on my Nano and talk a little bit about spinning on a Nano. So let's cut to that and then I'll come back and I think say my farewells, hopefully the second time around. Okay, see you in a minute. All right, you all. So I'm going to show you this wool before we start carding because this could be an epic fail. But I have this that I dyed up. This is horn dorset lamb. <clears throat> I dyed it up and I have two other colors to go with it in my head, but I'm not sure. I was just playing in the dyeing room without a lot of thought and I don't really love the colors together as they are. So originally it was going to be this color the other two colors and the white. I've switched it up because I don't think that this color with the other two colors will work. So what I've done now is picked these together because I want to mute out this kind of orangey red a little bit with the white. So we're blending, we're using the carding machine to blend out some of this color and hopefully get like a bit more of a peachy color instead of a vibrant color. So let's get it on the carter and let's see what happens, shall we? Okay, you all, I just started it up. So let's see what we get here when our roving comes out. I feel pretty good about it, but we'll see. Ooh, yes, much better than what I was going to get. Hopefully you all can see that. Okay, so we're getting more of like a peachy color than that really bright sort of Ronald McDonald color. So this is step one. Next step is I have more colors to add that hopefully will work. This could still be an epic fail, but let's get to the next step and find out. Okay, I'm not entirely convinced still, but we're gonna see. If this fails, then what'll happen is I will just card this up as this, which is a lovely color in and of itself, right? But I have also this very bright, which you could see like that and that, no. But this and that, much better. This and that, much better. So here's what I'm gonna do, you all. This is where it's gonna get a little wild. I am going to just take a chunk of this and like put it in here. Then I'm gonna take a chunk of this and replace. Now I'll do this differently. I, I don't know why I, I just laid it out the way I did, but we're gonna put some of this. So we'll see what happens. And I'm not really trying to do this uniformly. I'm just playing here. We're just playing and we're gonna see what happens. And like I said, it could be a big fail, but let's give it a go. So I'm gonna start the machine up and I will bring you guys on when we get to this point. All right, that purple officially went through. So let's see what we get here and how I can play with it more or less. It is really pretty just as is. So here comes a little bit of purple coming through. You can see that. And maybe it's just a matter of having. And then, so it's pretty subtle as that comes through. And it could just be that I need to add, and it's still coming through a little bit. This is the, the downfall of having a bigger size carter 
is that you just can't, it blends so well. And here we go. It's coming out a little bit better there. But it's not quite what I was wanting. So I think that the other color will be here in just a minute. We'll see. All right, I was running out of storage. So here comes the pink. This is straight up Easter. Um, so here's the pink coming out. And the purple has kind of since faded out. And I'll show you, the pink's gonna get a little more vibrant there. So do I love it? I don't know. I don't know if I love it, you all. We'll see. If it shows up for you guys to buy, that means I loved it. Here's where I ended up. I actually split it up. So I'm doing the pink and the purple separate with that ready white. And I'm getting, I'm very happy with it. Much happier than going back and forth. Let me show you on the carter what this looks like. Love it. All right, and here is the more purpley side of this. Thorn Dorset Lamb. And over here, it's going to fluctuate the same as the pink did. It's going to be heavier and purple sometimes. It's going to kind of make a tweedy, barber pole just all of it effect. All right. I'm not sure this is my favorite, but I know some will love it. And actually, I spun a little sample and whoo, it zips. It's really fun to spin, so, okay. Thanks for coming on with that experiment. I'll be a little more mindful when I'm dying next time. It had been a while, it had been a while. Okay, I am here at my Nano, and I was getting ready to start the second bobbin. I'll probably have showed it, but here's the first bobbin. Stunning, and Linda and Cammie gave me this, and I may have already talked about it, by the time um, we get to this point in the video, but I thought I would show you since I'm putting my Nano kind of back together, I was changing the bobbin out. It really is easy. I just don't have my glasses on. <laughs> so that pops in. That's the Scotch tension up there that I had just popped on. Putting the other band back on. My bands are everywhere right now. All right, so our Scotch tension is on. Make sure I have a good amount of Scotch tension on there. All right, so um, this wheel doesn't have a ton of uptake to it, so it wants to sprint, spin a pretty fine fiber. Uh, so that's what I spin on it. I tend to spin short forward on this just because, just because. So I think we're good on the side of the fiber this is. And I'm spinning close up to the wheel right now just so that you all can see. But generally speaking, I would be sitting back in my chair, try to maneuver my hand so you can kind of see what's happening here. Generally speaking, I'd be sitting back a couple feet and doing this, not right up on it, but I want you all to be able to see. And uh, I'll pull the camera back just a smidge. For those of you that are newer to spinning, you might want to be seeing what my backhand is doing. Uh, but I'm spinning this short forward. It's going to be pretty thin because, and you'll see as I pinch and pull forward, my backhand kind of, re it, uh, I release my backhand as I am starting to draft some stuff. And then I put my finger back down to kind of, so we've got some stuff drafting, but I don't want it to take it all. And really I'm letting the wheel tell me how much it's taking my hands. My front hands are just guiding out how much is going. But really the wheel should kind of help guide. That's what the speeds of the wheel do is help guide how much fiber is going. And like I said, this doesn't have a fast uptake, but you can get twist in pretty quick, which makes it great for spinning thinner weight yarns. So that's what I do on here. 
I work to the parameters of the wheel versus trying to make the wheel do something that it's just not really meant to do. And that applies to all spinning wheels. Not every, there isn't really a spinning wheel that will spin every type of yarn perfectly. Uh, so same goes for e-spinners. So I'm just gonna go along and this fiber does have, it has like a little bit of nepping. Angora is a rabbit to be clear, Angora rabbit loves to nep in carding if given the chance. So sometimes that's it, but all in all, it's spinning really beautifully. And what you can't feel is the handle on this because it is so soft. So anyway, this is this project. This is just gonna be a two ply yarn because there was only maybe 60 grams of this, uh, which is about two ounces. So it'll be nice and thin so I can maximize the yardage I get out of it. And um, I wanna just do a two ply out of it so that again, I can maximize yardage. Okay, I'm gonna not sit here and spin all day. And this is from, I should tell you, this fiber is from Windsor Farms Rabbitry and Yarns. Cami and Linda, thank you so much. Windsor Farms Rabbitry, they are on Etsy and on Facebook. So, and out of Oregon here. So very exciting. And I'll zoom in so you can see, isn't that gorgeous? Okay, onward to the next spinning project. Okay, it says my audio is recording you all. I've done that once before, but it's been a long, long time. So note to self, remember to check. Okay, I think we covered it. We covered all the spinning, we covered my cast on, we talked about, we had a pep talk about learning new things. And I think that's it for this week. So I'm gonna go, cause I still gotta get to the mill today. By the way, I am wearing my nurtured sweater, hand spun Shetland, Andrea Maori pattern. In case you were wondering, I will put a link in the show notes. Um, thank you all so much for coming back. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you like what I'm doing, tell your friends. Head to my Patreon if you have any interest in supporting me in that way. It does really help support all the time that I put into some of the social media outlets when I probably should be milling instead, but I love getting to connect with you all. So it's just another way to do that online uh, a little bit more intimately too. So check it out. Okay, until next week, stay healthy, be kind to everyone around you. I know it's hard sometimes, but be kind and make so many pretty things. All right, I will see you next week. Everybody take care. Thank you so much.